While the concept of stalker enemies was made popular with the Resident Evil series, plenty of horror games have featured them in their games. Some of which came out before we saw them in RE and others even built their entire game around the stalker enemy mechanic. So on today's list, I'm looking at all the different horror games that featured stalker enemies in some capacity. This will be the same concept with the same rules that I had with my Resident Evil stalker enemy ranking, but instead focusing on all horror games. Basically, a stalker enemy follows a few specific rules, like how they can't be killed until a predetermined moment in the game. However, they can be slowed down in some cases. They will follow you throughout certain levels, and in some circumstances, they'll follow you throughout the entire game. Also, I'm only looking at horror games, so don't expect any entries from Metroid or Prince of Persia. Oh, and I'm not going to do any cop-outs with asymmetrical horror games, like The Killers in Dead by Daylight or The Infected in Left 4 Dead. Finally, I'm basing my personal list on things that make these stalker enemies the best of the best. Rather that be because of the scare factor, the enemy AI, or the persistence of said stalker, all of the following enemies on today's list prove to be the best stalker enemies in horror games. Before we get started though, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content I bring you guys. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. Anyway, this is Ruben with Nerd Space Games with my top 10 best stalker enemies in horror games. Let's get it. Number 10, Scissors Man, Clock Tower. We start off today's list with a classic survival horror game that was probably the first successful use of a stalker enemy in a horror game, Clock Tower. Released about a year before the original Resident Evil, Clock Tower followed an orphan, Jennifer, as she explored a mansion known as the Clock Tower. Clever, I know. Unlike most games on this list, Clock Tower was a point and click horror game that challenged the players to explore the mansion while also keeping their distance from a creepy man with a giant pair of scissors known as the Scissors Man. Again, pretty clever. But as goofy as this concept might sound, Clock Tower actually executes the stalker enemy mechanic surprisingly well with this point and click horror game as Scissors Man will constantly keep you on your toes. From blocking your only exit out of the room to popping up out of a bathtub while you're examining a dead body. Scissors Man surprisingly provides a lot of fear and anxiety that requires you to think quickly on your feet. Number 9, The Hunter, Dead Space. Whether you're looking at the original version or the remake, Dead Space is one of the best sci-fi horror games out there. As someone that didn't play the original game until after I beat the remake, I found myself becoming a massive fan of this IP. And while the sound design and the setting of the Ishimura played a major part in helping this game be one of the scariest games of all time, I can't help but give some credit to Dead Space's very own stalker enemy, The Hunter. This unique one-of-a-kind necromorph is first seen after Isaac is locked in a room by Dr. Mercer. Created from implanting a piece of the necromorph tissue directly into the cranium of crew member Brant Harris, this necromorph is stronger, faster, and almost completely indestructible compared to the rest of the alien creatures that Isaac has come across. The hunter has the ability to regenerate, which means that no matter how many times you shoot off its limbs, they'll just continue to grow back over and over again. While not being as dangerous as other stalker enemies on this list, the hunter provides a feeling of panic as you're trying to race through dark halls to escape this creature. Also, a lot of the time you're facing it, you'll find that you're locked in a single room with it, meaning that there isn't much room to avoid him until the doors unlock. It doesn't show up as much as other stalker enemies on this list, and the final fight against it is a little underwhelming, but combined with the atmosphere of the Ishimura, the hunter proves to be one of the more memorable and scarier stalker enemies in horror games. Number 8, Daniela, Hunting Ground. <laughs> Easily the most underrated game on today's list, Hunting Ground is essentially the spiritual successor of the Clock Tower series. Just like Clock Tower, the entire gameplay of Hunting Ground is built on the stalker enemy mechanic. However, instead of just dealing with a single stalker enemy throughout the game, the player actually faces multiple stalkers. For that reason, choosing just a single stalker enemy to rep this game proved to be pretty damn difficult. However, there's one that stands out above the rest. That is, of course, the homunculus Daniela. She has just about everything you would want from a stalker enemy. She's outright terrifying since she's basically a psychopath who believes that she can become a full human by devouring Fiona. 
Her psychotic breaks and frantic laugh as she tries to kill Fiona makes the player feel uncomfortable and terrified at the same time. She's faster than most stalkers in the game and she closes doors behind her which could be beneficial or harmful to you depending on the situation. The only real downside of Daniela and why she doesn't move higher up on this list comes from the fact that she's not in the game enough. As I said earlier, the game features multiple stalker enemies. Unfortunately, this means we don't spend much time with her. Still, her unique traits make her the best in the game and one of the more intimidating and difficult stalker enemies on today's list. Number 7. Walter Sullivan, Silent Hill 4, The Room My name's Walter. Walter Sullivan. It's time to complete the 21 sacraments. When people think of Silent Hill stalker enemies, not many come to mind. And the one that does come to mind for most people is Pyramid Head in Silent Hill 2. However, I feel like Walter Sullivan in Silent Hill 4 is much better in just about every single way. Sure, Pyramid Head can prove to be more terrifying than Walter, but with the exception of a single moment in the basement of the Brookhaven Hospital, Pyramid Head doesn't really chase the player that often. Walter, on the other hand, spends the entire second half of the game chasing Henry throughout the second visits of each world. On top of that, Walter has a gun that he can shoot Henry with, something that you don't see often with soccer enemies unless your name is Nemesis. Every time Walter walks into a room, the player must react quickly and dodge his shot while making a beeline for the nearest exit. What makes Walter even more challenging is the fact that you're escorting Eileen at the same time, which means Walter can shoot her as well. And if you're trying to get that good ending, then keeping her from harm while also evading Walter proves to be the most difficult task of the game. Between his presence, the use of a gun, and the difficulty that he brings to the table, Walter Sullivan earns himself a spot on today's list. Number 6. Slenderman. Slender the Arrival. Just like Clock Tower, the Slenderman series takes the stalker enemy mechanic and then builds around it with each of its games to make some of the most terrifying moments in gaming. For example, Slender The Arrival is easily one of the scariest games I've ever played. Now full disclosure, I haven't played every single Slenderman game, so I couldn't really tell you if this one was the best or not. What I can say though is that Slenderman in The Arrival is easily one of the most unnerving stalker enemies in horror games. Unlike most stalker enemies, Slenderman doesn't necessarily attack the player, but rather focuses on a more literal idea of a stalker enemy as he stalks the player from afar. While there are other enemies in the game, Slenderman is the one that'll be with you throughout your entire journey as you head out to collect all of the missing pages. What makes him so terrifying is how quickly he can show up and just stare at you, which honestly is scarier than it sounds. As he teleports to different positions, his faceless stare will always be at the back of your mind throughout the entire game. If you manage to make the mistake of looking at him for too long, then it's all over, game over for you guys. Slenderman plays on the unsettling feeling of him always watching you, while at the same time keeping you wondering where he's going to show up next. Number 5, Laura, The Evil Within I went back and forth between a few enemies to feature from the Evil Within series on this list. Anima from the Evil Within 2, the Keeper from the first game were both great picks. But considering that I'm terrified of enemies that move and crawl like spiders and that I'm a sucker for the scariest stalker enemies, I went a different direction. I ultimately went with the scare factor and the intimidation factor that Laura brought to the table in the first game. Your first encounter with Reborn Laura is when you approach a pool of blood in the center of a morgue of some kind, after which you can try to take her down but be warned that defeating her is going to take a lot of damn resources and you'll end up having to fight her later on anyway so in true stalker enemy fashion, it's best to just run away from her until your final fight against her later on in the game. Plus the benefit of not using your valuable resources to kill her for a mere 8000 in skill points far outweighs the pros of killing her in the first fight. Anyway, to outrun Laura for the first time, you'll find yourself holding your own against her for a bit while also running through a hallway of booby traps. Other sections feature Laura crawling on walls around you and chasing you as you use valves and, and incinerators to hold her off. Eventually, you do get to take out Laura for good in Chapter 10, but her teleportation ability and her instant kill attack prove to be a deadly combination, so choose wisely on when to attack her, and of course, make fire your best friend. Number 4, The Stalker, Amnesia the Bunker. Ah! 
Amnesia games have always played with the idea of stalker enemies, but in most cases you were defenseless against them. Take the Gatherers from The Dark Descent for example. So when Amnesia announced that their newest game, The Bunker, was going to give the player more resources to combat the stalker hiding in the dark, I was kind of skeptical. Fortunately, Amnesia The Bunker turned out to be a pretty solid horror game. While the player did have resources to battle the stalker, the fact is that nothing could kill it. Grenades, flares, a shotgun, none of these items could put down this monster for good. At best, it would just scare it away for a few moments while you could find a place to hide or make a beeline for the main safe haven of the bunker. The main setting of the game is of course a World War I bunker. Considering that this indestructible creature likes to move around in the dark, you'll find that this game plays a lot on your fear of what lurks in the darkness. While the creature design is subpar at best, the idea of this giant creature with massive claws that can hear your footsteps as you move throughout this dark bunker is enough to make you fear the dark for the rest of your life. With random encounters, a generator mechanic that required you to keep the bunker lit, and the sound designs of the creature moving all around you in the walls, the stalker in Amnesia the Bunker is easily in the top 5 stalker enemies of horror games. Number 3. Chris Walker, Alas. Little face. Last week, my video for scariest games of all time went up. Spoiler warning, but on that video, we found Alas making that list. This is another series that has featured plenty of stalker enemies, like the demon in Alas 2 and Traeger in the first game. Hell, there was even a sequel to those games that was a multiplayer experience that featured plenty of different stalker enemies. However, what really made that first game one of the scariest games of all time is that big motherfucker Chris Walker. The dude gave me nightmares for days about him after playing the first game as he had some of the best jump scares seen in horror games. Anyway, the LS series uses the found footage mechanic while also combining it with the stalker enemy mechanic. Just like some other games on this list, you're unable to fight back against the enemies of this game. Instead, you have to use your camera's night vision feature to find your way through dark areas of this asylum. While doing so, you're constantly followed by Chris Walker. This guy will smash through doors and walls, scare the living hell out of you as you're trying to fit through a crawl space, and even call you Little Piggy and talk to you as he's chasing you. He'll pop up in the most inconvenient times and will chase you throughout almost every single room within this asylum. Most of the time, your only chance at escaping him is to hide, but doing this is scary as hell too because you'll have to sit in your hiding place and watch him search for you while getting an up close look at his terrifying face. Chris Walker is one of the scariest stalker enemies in horror games and definitely deserves a spot in the top three on today's list. Number two, Mr. X, Resident Evil 2 Remake. So if we're going with the most iconic stalker enemy in horror games, then obviously Nemesis deserves to be here over Mr. X. However, overall, Mr. X and RE2 Remake is just a better all-around soccer enemy than Nemesis is. While Nemesis in the original Resident Evil 3 was terrifying and unpredictable, something about the sound of Mr. X's footsteps in the RPD station as he's searching for you is just way more terrifying to experience. His theme music gets your heart racing and the sound of his footsteps behind you makes you question ever playing this game. He even has some incredible jump scares that'll completely catch you off guard. While he doesn't have the arsenal that Nemesis does, Mr. X's bare hands are enough to get the job done. Chasing you at a fast walk speed is both impressive and terrifying at the same time. And while it is possible to put Mr. X down, the fact is that he doesn't really take that long to get back up. Also, he always seems to find himself in the worst locations like the library when you're trying to move the bookcases around. What makes Mr. X such a great stalker enemy is the feeling of anxiety and tension that he brings alongside him. He's present in most of Claire's campaign and almost the entire Leon campaign, making him one of the most persistent stalker enemies on today's list. He always seems to time things out perfectly to catch you at a really bad time, like when he starts chasing you while you're trying to sneak through a hallway of liquors. That's pretty fucking annoying. Overall, Mr. X changes up Resident Evil 2 Remake in a massive way. It increases the sense of urgency while trying to complete certain objectives in the RPD station and for that reason he's ranked as one of the best stalker enemies ever created. Number 1. Xenomorph Alien Isolation You are separate. <laughs> If 
played Alien Isolation, then you should have been able to guess who would claim the number one spot. Nothing can even remotely compete with a Xenomorph in Alien Isolation. This alien is fucking insane and it's ridiculous how great of a stalker enemy he is. First off, the creature design is a spot on recreation of the traditional Xenomorph seen in the movies. So of course the way this creature looks and sounds is already enough to make it one of the most terrifying stalker enemies in video games. What really makes the Xenomorph stand out is its AI. Since it's present throughout most of the game, the Xenomorph finds ways to stay fresh and keep the player on their toes. To do this, Alien Isolation introduces a mechanic that allows the Xenomorph to be more adaptable. So if you like to hide in the lockers, then it's going to search a lot of fucking lockers. If you usually run immediately after it leaves an area, then it's going to pull a fast one on you and do a quick backtrack routine. The Xenomorph is consistently adapting to your playstyle throughout the game and therefore Alien Isolation requires you to take a more flexible approach when dealing with it. Sure, you're given weapons and items to help deal with the creature, but one mistake will lead to you instantly being killed. With the insane visuals to the Xenomorph itself, the incredible AI that allows the Xenomorph to be more unpredictable and adaptable to your playstyle, and the tense moments that you'll find yourself in as you have to sneak around while this predator hunts you down, the Xenomorph in Alien Isolation claims the title for the best stalker enemy in a horror game. But that does it for this episode of Nerdspace Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think of my list. Is the Xenomorph in Alien Isolation the best stalker enemy in a horror game? Is there a stalker enemy that I missed completely for this list? And finally, did I make the right call with Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 Remake over Nemesis from Resident Evil 3 Nemesis? Which one would you have put on today's list? Let me know all of your opinions down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, don't forget to leave a like on today's video and to subscribe for more survival horror content. But as always, I'll see you guys on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.